Hey y'all, it's Yvette and I'm starting a little sew along that I hope you will participate in. Um, I found this pattern on the AccuQuilt website and it was free. Uh, I spoke to them about using their pattern to create an FPP pattern using AccuQuilt dies and they were totally on board with it. So I'm hoping that you guys will sew along with me. Um, now you don't have to use uh, the dies. Uh, uh, well, you don't have to use the dies and you don't have to do FPP if you don't want to. So this is the pattern. I did introduce this about a year ago and I never got it. Um, it I never got it started. So I'm going to start this right now and it, I'm calling the pattern Bursting Stars and I have created this as an FPP pattern. So if you like perfection <laughs> are as close as humans can get because I mean you know we're not perfect but then you can go ahead and use my patterns or my templates I should say for creating this lovely quilt um, the pattern itself is free in my shop so if you go to the yvetterene.com and click on freebies then you'll be able to see it uh, there it's called bursting stars and I will go through a little bit real quick. I do show you the fabric requirements. Now, if you look at this quilt, you can see it's it's very abstract. So you do not have to uh, worry about what fabrics you're going to use. You can literally use anything that you have in your stash as long as the fabrics themselves blend well and are aesthetically pleasing to you, then you can go ahead and, and put them in here. So I do have them labeled by letter and that's only important whenever you're doing placement. So you'll see in the pattern that I give you the placement of all the fabrics and how many you're going to create of each block. Okay, so that's oh, what this is good for. And what you can do is you can take swatches of whatever fabric you want to use and either put it over it. I know the letters inside or you can just put it to the side. That way, you know that that's the fabric you're going to be using. And then these are just the letters you're going to follow. Um, so there are several layouts that I give you. This one I give you as a coloring sheet so that you can perhaps take even if you're going to use prints, you can take like uh, the uh, most dominant color in that and kind of color it in to make sure you're going to like how it's going to look once it's finished. Um, this one here can be the color sheet without the letters. So depending on how you want to use it, I gave it to you both ways. Um, the next two sheets are the blocks that are the templates that you're going to need. Uh, the A and the B, to make your blocks FPP. If you're going to be using FPP, this is these are the two pieces you'll need, and you'll need, you know, quite a few of them. I think I didn't put it on here, but it depends on what size you want your quilt to be. Um, because once you have the layout of the quilt looking like it does in the picture, you can always do add more if you want, or you can do whatever you'd like. So if you are going to add to make the uh, piece bigger, then you'll need more. It just depends. Um, okay, so if you don't want to use uh, an AccuQuilt, then I do have this made up so that you can cut your pieces out to put them together together. Um, using traditional piecing but just note that it says not to scale <laughs> so you're not going to be using this this is just to say hey here's the kite and you want one side to be i think it's like it's six and a half six and a half and then three and a half three and a half okay so you'll be you'll cut the first one on your own and then uh and you can always put it on like a piece of cardboard if you want to like um take you know, once you finish a cereal box, you can always take a cereal box and mark your own six and a half, six and a half, three and a half, three and a half, and then that cut that out, and that can be your template where you can cut your fabric. Um, and then the triangles, um, it's 
six and a half, six and a half, six. Okay. And this is not to scale either. Neither one of these is to scale. So you'll want to make your own template. So you could do that. You could totally do that. Um, and then your cutting instructions will tell you how much you need of each shape and of which fabric. Okay, now if you are going to be using your AccuQuilt dies, I do put on here which die you're going to need. And you just need these two dies. I'm gonna show them to you um, whenever I head over to the cutting table and start getting mine ready. So um, you can totally see what I'm using and how that works. Uh, let's see. Now, if you already got this quilt pattern, um, it's all still the same. Nothing has changed. Um, the only thing that I changed for myself, just to let you know, is I have decided to make mine in thatched instead of um, art gallery solids. That's the only difference. And um, so all the instructions, everything is still the same. Um, okay, and then you'll have your block requirements. And this is showing you the placement of all the fabrics and um, how many you're gonna need of each one. So when you're making this block, you'll need four. When you're making this block, you'll need eight, and so on and so forth. Um, so probably what I'm gonna be doing is each week I'm going to be sewing um, eight blocks along with you because it's normally either you're making eight or you're making four. So when there's four, I will do two of them. And then when there's eight, I'll do one in that week. So I'll be telling you which ones I'm working on and we can work on them all together. Um, and then there's, it's basically just in it, how to put it together, which it comes together so quick once your blocks are done. Um, as long as, and here's, here's what I recommend is either having a place on the wall where you can pin them up, or if you have um, a quilt wall that you can, uh, you will need to still pin because if you're going to be, well, as long as, you, if you're doing FPP, um, because I recommend that you leave your papers in so that you can use that quarter inch to uh, put all of your blocks together. It just makes things so much easier because you know that that's a quarter inch and you don't have to worry about placement on your machine, nothing. All, all you need to do is just sew straight down that line, you know you got a quarter inch. So that's why I always recommend leaving the papers in until after you join all of your blocks together. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna head over to the cutting table and we're gonna start cutting our fabric, so let's go. Hey y'all, I just wanted to come on real quick um, because Whenever you are a vlogger, <laughs> the worst thing or one of the worst things that can happen to you happened to me. Um, so I had recorded some of or all of the cutting on my AccuQuilt Go Big. I'd recorded it overhead so that you could watch me um, from the top down. And at the same time, uh, what I had forgotten is that I had recorded it from the side so that I could use that video in a TikTok or Instagram, something like that, to kind of show that as well. Well, I ended up, quite by accident, deleting the overhead footage. Don't even know how I did that, but I did. And so I thought that I was just totally in trouble because I didn't have any of that footage and you can't recreate that. Um, and so then I was scrolling through my videos and that are on my phone and I realized that I do have the footage, but I have it from the side. Um, so you're gonna be watching that footage from the side um, and, you know, please pray with me that I don't do that again. <laughs> and so going forward, the videos that show me cutting fabric or any of that sort of thing will actually come uh, from the top down so that you can see a really good um, depiction of me doing that. So I just wanted to preface that and let you know why the video is going to look a little funny because it's kind of it's going up and down instead of sideways. It's um, so enjoy and hopefully regularly planned videos will not be deleted in the future. 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, so here we are over at the cutting table, and you'll see that I have um, my fabric requirements in front of me. I have my block requirements, and I'm going to be doing this uh, section of blocks for week one. So I've written down the fabrics that I need, I've collected my fabrics, and we're going to go ahead and get ready to start. So, um, let me go through this real quick. I think I've gone, yep, I've gone over all of that with you. Again, um, this is what it will look like. And um, you'll see that every block, there's like, there's like a section um, with different colors in every one. And so you'll correspond that to the block requirements here. Okay. So let me scooch that over. Don't think I need that right now. Um, and I'm going to take just a second before I do this, and I'm going to trim my uh, my templates, okay? So let me move that over for a moment. And all I'm going to do, um, I did, I think I, I think I printed nine of each instead of only eight, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut them um, anyway. And let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll just do four at a time. I don't have to go through like Hercules or anything. <laughs> now you don't have to use your ruler and um, rotary cutter. You can cut them with scissors if you want. I just think that this sort of makes short work of it. So this is what I do. You may have to square them up each time just to make sure that you're getting it right where it needs to be on all of your sheets. Um, I'm only going through four on this one. And I guess the next pile, I'll attempt five and see if I can get it through there. Probably so. Let's see. pieces of paper sticking to the bottom of the thing. That's funny. Okay, I'm gonna move those over. Let me try to do these next five. The four went pretty easy, so I think five may be okay. Yep, that was okay. When you have nail polish on it like sometimes you can't grab everything that you want to grab it's kind of crazy <laughs> it's pretty dry here in Colorado and so there's like static everywhere and I know I could do the humidifier thing, but we haven't really talked about that yet. So we'll see what we decide to do. Okay, so I have all of my A templates cut out and I'm just gonna do the B now. I'll go ahead and do the four and then the five again.
Now you'll see on your template um, that we do have these little notches. And what I tend to do is I wait I until... <laughs> Sorry, that's my... Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I tend to wait until after I have my fabric sewn onto my template. And then when I'm cutting the fabric, then I just cut it there at the same time. You can totally cut it now. It really doesn't matter. Um, either way will work just fine. Just fine. It's, it really comes into play once you are uh, connecting your blocks together, not necessarily when you are sewing the fabric down. And you can see I'm Miss Hospital Corners. I'm gonna like totally, <laughs> um, I'm gonna totally like make sure my papers are all lined up nice, nice before I cut them. And really you do have to do that if you're going to be cutting them with your rotary and you're going to be doing more than one um, because you, you definitely wanna make sure that you are cutting them properly. So, um, you know, you need that quarter inch seam allowance. You want to make sure that you're doing that properly. So I wouldn't just trust it. That's, that's me. I wouldn't just trust it. I would totally do hospital corners every time. Okay. So now I have all of my templates cut out. And I am going to go and, y'all, I don't know why I do this. This is just me. I'm such a, I, I just sit here and I nitpick everything. But I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab my go cutter and come back. And we are going to um, cut our fabric. Oh, why wouldn't that word come to me? <laughs> We're going to cut our fabric next. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back and I have my fabric cut and I'm ready to run it through my AccuQuilt Go. And mine is the AccuQuilt Go Big. It's electric and I'll show you how that works. So the first thing I wanna do is get my dies out. So for my triangles, I'm going to use this die. Um, this is from the uh, Go Cube Mix and Match 12 inch companion set of angles. So this one is number 55757. You will get um, a six inch finished with this one. Okay, so I'm going to be using that for my triangles. And then I have from the Go Cube Mix and Match companion set of angles. I will be using this one for the kites. And this is number 55770 for a six inch finished as well. Uh, you get a six inch finished and it is in the 12 inch companion set. Okay, so I just wanted to clear that up. So let me take my dies. I'm just going to move them for a second so I can open my go big. So there it is. And I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, let me see here. I am going to just move things so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, uh, this one, I just unplugged it. This one is a little heavy, um, but once you have it in place, you don't have any twisting of your wrist to run it through or anything like that. Um, okay, so let me plug it back in. Probably have to turn it back on. Okay, it's back on. Now, on my list here, I know that my, let me see, which one am I gonna do first? I can probably do my kites first. Okay, so for my kites, I'm going to need my plum. I'm going to need 
passion. I don't have my passion right now, so I'm substituting crimson. Um, so I'm just going to put that one in. And then I need petal. And again, these are all thatched fabrics. And okay, so those are the ones I need for my kites. And here's my kite. And I forgot my, um, my mat, so one second. Okay, so I have my mat and this is going to not really matter how I cut it because um, my fat, you know, it'll go both ways and no matter which way you do it, um, it will come out correctly. Um, so it's not like there's, uh, it's, what, what word am I trying to use? <laughs> like it's the same on both sides. I don't remember what the terminology is for that because I'm going through something that women go through. I'm going to just put it at that just in case there's guys out there and they're like, I don't want to talk about this. Um, <laughs> so you can fan fold is what I'm trying to say. You don't have to um, worry about it not being this. It's, it's equilateral. It is the same both ways. It is... Uh, <laughs> So anyways, that's what I'm going to do. And you can put up to six layers of fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, do my cuts all at once right now because I can. And I'm going to need more in the future. I'm going to need them uh, down the road for the rest of the quilt. So I'm just going to go ahead and get them in now. I'm just going to make sure that all of my edges are fine. And they are. And I'm just going to let that hang like that. And I'm going to put my mat down. And now with this guy, with um, the go big, all you have to do is start pushing it in and it will automatically take it up and come out the other side without you having to do anything, okay? Sometimes you get a little snag here and there, but it's not a big deal. Um, all of the edges, all of the stuff in the edges is going to be um, in your seam allowance. So if you have a little straggler like that, that's okay. Um, okay, so I've got my petal and now I'm going to do crimson. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just going to get it right over the edge there. And then I'm going to start fan folding it. And same over here. I'm just going to make sure that my fabric is going to cover all the edges. That's okay. That'll be a little extra. I can keep that on the side. And I'm just going to slide that through again. Now, I don't have any, any little scissors right here. Let me um, grab a pair. Okay, so just in case you get it caught again, like there's a little piece right here. I can see there's a little boop. So I can just use a little scissor and that will just make it more neat. There's a little one right here and a little tiny right there. Boop. Okay. So now I'm gonna take these kites. These are my crimson. I'm just gonna put those to the side and now we're going to do the plum same way oops up there I was looking in the wrong spot okay
Okay. Looks good. I don't see any part of it popping out of the side. So I'm going to, I don't know. I just like to, sometimes I just double check everything. I just, <laughs> I think it's over here. Yep, that one's good. Okay, so it's ready. I'm going to just slide this through. You don't have to push it or anything. I don't want anyone to think I'm pushing it. I was just holding it. <laughs> okay. I got a little bitty, teeny tiny piece right there. It needs to just be trimmed. Okay, now I have finished my kites. So I'm gonna switch it out for my triangle. And I need the triangle to be fuchsia and the pink grapefruit, and that's it. That's what I got over here. Okay, great, so I'm gonna just do the same exact thing. But can you imagine if you were having to, um, you know, if you have to cut these all by hand, the time it would take you to do that. I mean, it's such a time saver to use the AccuQuilt cutters. Um, now, I personally am not an applicator, and I know um, that probably, you know, most people probably think that this is mainly for applique, and I can totally understand why, because, um, you know, a lot of the dyes are all in these shapes, and I've ac I actually used my AccuQuilt um, to cut out Sunbonnet Sue for my mom's quilt that my mom wanted me to make. Um, Sunbonnet Sue and, gosh, I forget the, the name of the little dude, but anyways, so cute, and it went so fast because I could just, you know, do the, the cuts like this and not have to um, worry about and they always come out perfect so that's the other thing and they give you like the little dog ears so you can match them all up um it's really wonderful so um i just can't say enough good things about accuquil i love them of course i work with them you guys know that um but i use it all the time i use it to um i make my binding with it because it makes short work of those strips. And sometimes whenever I'm cutting strips on my own, um, you know, I'll go a little crooked or wonky or whatever, because, you know, you do the best you can, but man, I just can't ever seem to get them perfect. And that's what I want. You know, it's like, I want them to be perfect. So, you know, <laughs> all right. And then one more, this is the pink grapefruit. Um, so anyway, I, I just, it's, it's the reason why I work with them because I really do believe in the product. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And, you know, if you have like, they do have the crank. I have, I have every one of the go cutters except studio. I do not have that one. Um, but even if you have the crank, the crank is not hard to turn. But some people have pain, they have arthritis, they have, you know, all that, you know, we all have some kind of issue um, that may limit us in what we can do with quilting. So this Go Big is just perfect for that. And let me see, where's the, it's there. Okay, that's still covered. I'm making sure, because this one went a little bit short. It might be a little bit short, but you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try to get it in there. And if it doesn't work and it doesn't work. So, um, I'm just going to make that executive decision. <laughs> okay. Last one. Okay. Let me see if that, which one is it? It's right there. Okay. And one little one right there. Ooh. Okay. All right. So now I am going to take all of this fabric 
and I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and we are going to start sewing this fabric onto our templates for our quilt. So let's head over there. Okay, so I have my little cheat sheet, I have my fabric, and I have my, uh, my templates. So, and I know I have nine and I only need eight, so I'm going to take one of these off so I don't forget because I don't want to sew something I don't need to, and I can save that one um, for next time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is all eight of these are going to have their pieces in the same place. Okay, so I know that it's I going to be, I have no idea why it keeps talking like that, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I know that they're going to be here. I have my cheat sheet and I know what goes where. So I'm just going to write it. Um, right on the template so that I don't forget exactly what fabric gets sewn where, okay? So I'm just going to lay them out like this and I know that on A1, I need my D fabric, which for me is plum. So I'm just going to write plum on all of them. And I recommend that you don't skip this step only because I can't tell you uh, how easy it is to get confused. And you might think, oh, well, you know, they're going to all be in the same place and I can sew them all at the same time, which is what I'm going to do. But you never know when you may have to get up from your table from sewing. And a cat makes a huge noise and, and you know, freaks you out a little bit. Um, and you get up and you think you're coming back, but then you don't. And then you come back and then everything. I'm just saying, I recommend <laughs> always doing this before you start. I, I just highly recommend it. Um, so my next fabric is going to be E. And E is fuchsia. So I'm going to write fuchsia on my A2. And you can write, uh, like if you're using um, something like, um, something that is um, not solid, you know what I mean? Like if you're using a print of some kind, you can always just call it something that reminds you of that fabric. Like if your fabric that you're putting on A2 has got birds on it, just write birds. I mean, it just, as long as you are going to know what it is, I think you're just fine. And Jelly Bean has found a toy. <laughs> Oops, almost misspelled fuchsia, which is not hard to do. Okay, um, my A3 is F, and that is passion, which I changed to crimson. So I'm going to write crimson. And boy, my, my handwriting keeps getting worse and worse right now. Jenny Bean, what are you doing, baby? What are you doing? You thought that would help mom a lot? He's he's moving all of my uh, my little heart templates. And if you guys saw my um, little sew along that I had last Friday uh, where we were making hearts, and that's one of my templates. He's got that right there, and he's found... Um, He's found a koala, <laughs> not a real one, but you know, so he's knocking that around, but he's left now. So I'm not sure where he went. He's my little, my little cook pot. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me down South. We, we call everything something weird. Uh, so a four is G, which is pink grapefruit. Y'all, I'm just going to write grapefruit because you know, no, I don't think I need to write the whole thing. I'll know what it is. So I'm just going to write grapefruit. You can put like little, whatever it is that you're going to recognize is just fine. I probably don't even really need to write out grapefruit, but I will.
Okay, so my A templates are ready to go. And I'm just gonna real quick do the Bs because why not, we'll get it done. Uh, my first letter on B is E, which is fuchsia. So I'm going to write fuchsia in my B4. I think I'm trying to see how messy can I make my handwriting. <laughs> oh, I forgot, I think I forgot to take a B out. Because I only need eight. I'm pretty sure I forgot to, so. Let me, I think I put that one over there. Let me double count, or double check my count on the B. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, good. Uh, now B3 is passion, which I changed to crimson. So this is crimson. Okay, now B2 is pink grapefruit, so I'm just going to write grapefruit. written this fast and I don't even know how long because I type everything these days you know okay and one more uh, B1 is petal oh and it's the only petal okay so petal Okay, last one. All right, now we are ready to start sewing. I'm gonna take my B's, put them over to the side, take my A's, and the way I'm going to do it is um, like, because these are going like from one outside point to another outside point, makes it very easy to uh, chain piece these. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you exactly how I do that. Okay, so you want to, uh, with FPP, you want to sew your pieces on in the number in which you see them on your template. So the very first one is plum, and let's see, I'm gonna, these are triangles, triangles, kite, kite, kite. Okay, so this is a kite, and it's plum, which is this guy, so I can take it and I am just going to place it right there and it'll fit exactly on there with some despair. I do that on purpose um, because guys, there is nothing more stressful than uh, almost having too little fabric um, because it, it's just stressful. And why do that to yourself? I mean, you're really 
not going to have that much left over. So when I'm working with bigger pieces like this, I do put just a little bit of uh, glue. And the glue that I use is from Soline. I also know that you could probably use like the disappearing glue, like the purple glue that you can get uh, for kids. And so I think you can use either one because uh, you don't need a lot and it will wash off. So, you know, I, I, you could use either one. So what I do is I turn my template over and I know you can't see, but I can see where the lines are. And I'm just going to put a very small amount, just going to, and that only looks like more because it came off of the, the stick. I wouldn't have normally put that much, but you really don't need a whole bunch. Just get right outside the ends. And then um, this, the first fabric is the only one that you're going to lay down pretty side away from you. Everything else you're going to sew on with the pretty side facing you. So then I'm just going to make sure it's in the middle and then I'm just going to press it down. And it'll just hold that piece in that space so that when you're adding your next piece, it's not going to be flopping around. Um, so that's why I do that. So my number two piece is a triangle and it's fuchsia. So that's um, this one right here. And I know that it's going to fit like this right there. Okay, so I, but I also know that I'm going to sew it on with it facing me pretty side like this, right? But I want to make sure this long end or this end is on that side. So when I'm holding it up, I want the number two to be to the top. And then I'm going to take my piece of fabric with the pretty side facing me and I'm going to move it to the back of the template. And I'm just going to make sure it's like in the middle, right? So I want like the same amount of fabric to be on either side of the template, right? So it'll be, cause these, you guys, these are like the most simple things to do for FPP. Very, very simple. You're just putting them right on and you wanna make sure that the fabric, which I can tell back here, is at least a quarter of an inch above this line that you're going to sew on because this is our seam allowance line. So don't worry about what it looks like down here. You just want to make sure it's about a quarter inch above this line. This piece that you have up here, that's your seam allowance. Okay. So now I'm going to lower my stitch length. I lower mine all the way to 1.2 because I'm using uh, regular copy paper. So I want to make sure that I go straight through. And I'm going to be connecting A1 and A2. So I'm going to sew right down that line between the two. And it's just a straight line. So here we go. Okay, now since I'm, I said that I was going to chain piece them, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the next template, I'm going to flip it over and we'll put a little bit of glue. Just a little. And I'm going to take this plum kite and same thing. Going to lay it down on there. Just press it just to make sure it stays down. And then I'm going to take a fuchsia triangle. I'm going to hold it pretty side to me, flip it around to the back of the template, make sure it's, you know, relatively centered on that line. And then, I think I did it this way. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep them the same way just so it doesn't look funky to you guys. It really doesn't matter which way you go though. So now I'm going to just sew right off the edge all the way and then I'll raise my foot and 
you're going to sew. So just make sure you can see that that's where it's going to, it's going to meet up because your fabric will be sticking out if you cut it the way I did. All right. So I'm just going to sew right onto there and then I'm going to sew down. just going to keep that up.
Okay, so now we are ready to do our trimming. So I'm going to do that. I just fold it back, lay down my add a quarter ruler, and trim. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over and press all of these pieces and then I'll come back and we'll add our piece number three.
Okay, so I am back and I have all of my templates. These are my A templates and they look like this. And I also have all of my B templates and they look like this. Okay, and so now I'm going to be joining those together to make um, one big block. And the way that I do that is I'm going to pick up an A and a B, and I know I'm going to be joining them there. And I wanna make sure I'm putting them right sides together. And then I'm going to use Wonder Clips to hold them together and then pins to make sure that they're exactly where I want them to be. So I just wanted to make a head-on video for you um, for this particular part. And now I am going to sew all these together and um, I'll have you watch from the side like you have been before. So I just wanted to show you head-on how to do this.
So as you can see, I have finished eight of these blocks and I am ready for next week where I'm going to make another eight blocks. Uh, and I think what I might do for the next video is I'm going to have um, two of the different blocks where I need four of each. And then that way, um, you just kind of change it up a little bit. So um, there will be other weeks where I'm having, you know, eight of the same one, but I think next time I'm going to do a four and four. Um, so I can't wait to continue this with you guys. Um, please come back. Don't forget to get the pattern. It's free in my shop at theeventrene.com. And while you're there, um, you can always check out any of the other patterns that I have um, either for free or on sale. And also, if you're interested in uh, an AccuQuilt Go cutter and or the um, dies that are used to make these blocks. I will have a link for those in the description box below. Um, and I appreciate you clicking on my links. I am an affiliate for them, so I do make a little bit of commission every time you um, purchase something that I uh, send or have a link to. And, you know, that's how I make a little bit of money so that I can continue to do these things for you. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.